Hi there and welcome back to the voiceover vlog. Today I'm going to talk with you about preamps and interfaces. And it's a very important part because you definitely need an interface. So as a voiceover you have your booth or your room where you record in and your microphone and then you have to put your recording, your microphone, in a device that will translate this from an analog signal into the digital world of your laptop or your PC. It's also possible to use a real hardware recorder, but a lot of people uh, use it into PC or laptop so they can immediately put it in their DAW software to uh, edit the recordings. So I'll show you the thing that I always use and a lot of people use. It's very simple. It's a Focusrite uh, 2i2. Uh, this is 2i4, uh, by the way. I also started with a 2i2. And um, it has two XLR inputs. It has a monitor... Uh, uh, volume, a separate headphone volume, um, 48 volts, so that's, uh, that's phantom power, and um, it has the great ability to do input and playback for your monitoring. And what that does basically is that if you have your inputs, uh, you can monitor those, but you can also do the playback. So if you, for example, record with singing on music, then the music can be in Logic, running, or in Pro Tools, whatever your DAW is. And then you can also hear on your headphones the playback of that music. So that's what this button can do. And this kind of uh, machines and, and, and uh, equipment is enough for voiceover. Um, however, I still upgrade it and I'm going to explain you why and I'm going to show you the new Focusrite I bought. Um, basically, I thought I'm going to step up to the uh, voice booth, the vocal booth, and I wanted a second headphone output, uh, separately uh, uh, volume controlled, and I wanted to be able to make a separate mix for that as well. So I wanted to control whatever I wanted to hear there and how loud I wanted it. Because I use my headphones here behind me on the desk to do full control and mixing, for example, but in the booth I only want my microphone back or sometimes I want some music, but not the whole shabam. And uh, secondly, I wanted to work with more I.O. gear, so I needed inputs and outputs to use the channel strips, for example. So that's when I bought the Focusrite preamp, and it's called the Scarlett 18i20. And as I told you in the walk around, that's a bit misleading, because if you really want to use 18 in and 20 out, you need to have a, a second device, an octo blah blah thing, that you um, can, can link up to the Scarlett with these kind of optical cables, so there you see these little red lights in the back and it's uh, it's a digital signal that you can attach, but then you need to buy a second machine. Um, I'm going to walk you through the front of the machine. Uh, first of all, you see the XLR 1 and 2 inputs. So they are on the front, that's very easy. I use it only for my SM7B because that's on my desk. Then you see Phantom Power. It has channel 1 to 4 and 5 to 8, so you only have 48 volt uh, switching per four channels, so not per channel. Most of the time that's not a big problem. As I said, I use a, a, a Triton Fathead on my dynamic microphones as well, so it's not really a problem because that needs Phantom uh, as well as the condenser mics, but still it would have been great to do that in the software per channel. Then we see the eight input knobs, that's the preamp gain that you see, and you also see separate pad and air uh, switching, uh, air for the first, and you can do all these functions within the Focusrite control software as well. Then we have the metering, so that's the input metering, and we have a control knob for the monitors, and then I switch that to my Genelex, and I'm uh, thinking about buying some Atom 77X second pair of monitors and then you can switch to those in between with the ALT button underneath. Then you have dim and mute for the monitors and you have the headphone controls, the knobs, and I can separately uh, do the gain for that as well, the volume. Then we have the power button. And then quick addition to the first part, I almost forgot that one of the most important things I really wanted was a talkback function from my booth. So there is a talkback button on the Scarlett that I can route to a specific headphone output and it can be a 
internal microphone as you can see it's uh, located on the front panel or you can choose your own input for that so i can also use my shure sn7b as a directive input for the headphone in the booth so if i'm recording and someone someone else is the voice talent then we can give them directions so that's also a very great addition of the focus right uh, we have this software it's called focus uh, control and to be honest that's the most awful software i've ever used it's terrible it's very stable it's not effective not not being uh, workable but it's terrible in user interface and it's very unclear uh, on the back panel you have these uh, six xlrs and together with the two in the front that's eight xlr ins um, so that's enough for me and then you have 10 jack outputs but one and two are in use for the gen legs and seven and eight are linked together parallel with headphone output one and nine and ten with headphone output two so the benefit is that I can make a separate mix for those, but I lose four jack outputs that I that should be easily uh, controlled separately from the headphones, but they didn't. So I basically have four outputs uh, to use with my uh, outboard gear. So I have two of them going to the warm audio bus compressor stereo, uh, one output going into the SPL frontliner and one into the art voice channel. But if I would switch to a second pair of monitors, I would immediately have to expand my uh, Focusrite situation because it wouldn't be enough. The audio quality of the Focusrite is really, really good. The preamps are very good and um, the air function that this one has on every channel really gives it extra light and um, high sound, so really fresh and really crackling. That's very nice. But that being said, I also have these functions with simple EQ and I also have it in my um, focus channel, uh, how do you call that? Channel strips. So I don't really need it, but if you might consider this without channel strips and just using it as a interface with your DAW, then it's definitely worth the money. However, there's also an SSL 2 Plus, it's called, I believe, that's a very, sh that's like the focus right, but then from SSL, and it has this uh, 4K uh, 4000 series SSL console function and it does basically the same. So, and that's for a lot less money. I believe this is between five and 600 or so. Um, so that's what this uh, machine does. So I use it to create a mix for the booth and, uh, and monitor uh, volumes. I create it for the inputs, I use it, and I use it to create a separate mix for my headphones in the vocal booth. And that's uh, very easy, so I can decide if I want to hear both microphones because sometimes that interferes with each other or that I just have one of them uh, on my headphones. Um, so that, that really works. So you use an interface as a voiceover to put the sound of your microphone in your digital environment. We call this AD or DA conversion. It's called analog to digital or digital to analog. In this case, it's digit, uh, analog to digital world. So it's an AD converter for you. And it also gives the, the phantom power for your condenser mics and uh, it does monitor controlling for you at your desk. So that's where you need an interface for. Basically a focus ride of 150-200 euros does the trick. Don't go buying extremely uh, uh, expensive preamps, you don't need it. This is really good enough and cli uh, clients will definitely accept a focus ride with a good microphone. What they won't accept is a bad microphone with a good preamp. So don't overspend. But in my situation with a, a bit more complex studio uh, uh, setup, you want some freedom with in and outs. And uh, one day I might uh, expand it with the, uh, the Octo as well to really go to 18i20. Uh, so this was my uh, voiceover vlog about the uh, preamp and interface. Thank you so much for watching.